Hello everyone, I'm Paul Kidwell and this is day three of our modifications to Gemini. Uh, I'm here without Captain Chris at the moment. Um, we're going to surprise him by making a modification to the control cabinet. Um, I have some old uh, control heads. They have a very ancient computer in them. It's a, what, a 10 inch flat screen, maybe a 12. And we use these for torque controllers when I work and they are extremely obsolete now and the thing we have in them that we're going to need is a meter similar to the one that's on a thumper and all kinds of stuff falling out but here's our meters and we already have one that's disconnected or at least unscrewed. So I'm going to just clip and clip and clip and clip. Now, there's a potentiometer on the back of the, uh, or on the bottom of the Variac stack inside the uh, control cabinet. And what this is is a DC meter. It runs on 110 AC, which plugs in here. It measures the, uh, oh, where is it? Now, the excitation is one and two, and signal input is three and four. So these two are your DC voltage input. These two are a DC voltage output. I happen to know it's 10 volts on this meter. So you put 10 volts out here and read a voltage in here. What we're going to do is we're going to attach either end of the potentiometer on the bottom of the stack to these two, and then put, hook the uh, sense wires here up to one end of the excitation and then the wiper on the potentiometer. This will give us a voltage proportional to the position that the variac stack is in and the meter is programmable so I can program that so that at zero volts it'll read zero and at whatever the maximum is it'll be a hundred. So we'll have a percent output showing what percentage our variac stack is at. Right now the only thing we got is a broken switch for the minimum travel to let us know we're at zero and another switch for maximum travel to let us know when we're at full power. This will let us know where we really are when the sparks start flying. And we're back here in the high voltage lab. I'm standing at the control cabinet for Gemini and what we have is the, uh, the terminal connections that go between this cabinet and the cabinet with the actual buttons and knobs and lights on it. A um, long time ago, we ran the wire to go from cabinet to cabinet, and we have two 10 conductor cables. One of these was totally unused, and it's spiraled up over here. Well, I took three of those wires and put into the terminal strip here to go to the three wires for the potentiometer. These three wires run all the way over down to this gray cable right here, and that goes all the way down to the bottom of the stack. The potentiometer that's on the bottom of this stack has been there all along, through all the years we've been running this cabinet, but we've never used it. And what I've done is wired it into three unused wires here, and we've actually checked it out with a ohmmeter. It's a 1K trimmer, or potentiometer, down at the bottom. And our wiper is the blue wire here, and our cable it's going to be the black wire. The low end of the potentiometer is the brown wire, and the high end is the red wire. So we're going to move over to the other cabinet now. We're all wired in over here and all checked out, so we know it's going to work. Um, so what's left is just actually wiring in the meter to the panel. Okay, we're here at the uh, control panel itself, and I have my three wires brought out here. Um, we've wired into uh, AC power for the other connector and they plug into the back of our meter here and here. If I can get them in. Now, the top two are our 10 volt excitation. The bottom two are our reading. And I've tied the negative output from the excitation to the negative input of the uh, reading. And our wiper on our potentiometer is tied to the black wire here. Now, this is a programmable meter, and unfortunately, I don't have the PDF file handy. It's kind of sitting on my computer back in my office. 
So we're all wired in and ready to go. Um, we need to cut a rectangle in our panel here so we can mount it so it will be visible from the outside. But the next step for me to do is to dig out the PDF file and get this programmed so we'll actually get our 0 to 100 reading. I was going to have this for you before you got here. It's like 300 computers in a building. How do you not have the PDF file for that by now? Because this is a very old meter, and Micron Meter as a brand name isn't really Micron Meter anymore. But I don't the internet has a very long memory. We looked. We couldn't find a PDF file. We found the website. We found the meter. We saw a picture of the actual meter. You can find the thing. Call for information. How many years have you been programming now? Ages. I got it printed out. It's in my file cabinet. You can't figure out how to program with it? Well, I mean, the programming on the front, I've already got it set. You figured out that ball puzzle I gave you. Well, you can't uh, figure this out. The problem is the input board. Okay. See, the, this meter here. It's got little jumpers, I know. Well, it's got little jumpers. Okay. And well. I guess we can sit here and try and play trial and error. Because that's thrilling to you. <laughs> but, I mean, it's a great meter. I mean, there's the input board oh, with the AC power supply. There's the communication board, RS-485. Through a cat through RJ-11. Yeah. RJ-11. Okay. Anyhow, this is the input board. Okay. This is, if we got the RMS AC input boards, we could turn these meters into AC meters and actually measure the output voltage over there. Okay. But that's DC. It'd be fun. So there's a bunch of jumpers much, here. I'd be much, much happier if you could get me output voltages, waveform, and time domain analysis off the secondaries. Oh, that'd, sure. That'd be kooky. We'll work on that. We got all these meters. Why can't we do something like that? Uh, time. I see 16-year-old kids posting stuff on the internet showing their waveforms and that. Why can't we do that? We haven't taken the time. We're busy building things like 100 kVA coils. All right. Okay, okay. I'm gonna, just for you, I'm going to play around and try moving jumpers around. You can try that. I mean, really, what's the worst that could happen? You can just burn up the $500 meter. meter. Yeah. Well, we got like a bunch of them. Oh, yeah, that's a good excuse. But, yeah. That's a big jumper. That's a big jumper. Yeah, okay. Oh, hey, what happened to the front bumper of your car? Well, there was this, this wooden post, and I kind of didn't see it. And I kind of hit it. You're scaring motorcyclists across the internet right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no motorcyclists were injured in the uh, destruction of that post. But anyhow, it just flops back in there and the cover goes back on. That's a real high quality housing they got there. Yes, it is. Uh, it works. This is, this is like a $250 panel meter. Hey, they took the time to put a sticker with stuff on it. You'd think they put a sticker on the other side that shows the jumper settings. Because these boards are interchangeable and there's like a dozen different boards that could be in here. There isn't enough room to put all the jumpers for all the boards. Okay. I mean, this is just for this particular variety. Okay. But, okay, I've changed the jumper. You changed a jumper. I have changed a and jumper. Now we're reading... God only knows what. Femto farads or something. That one, and it's that got a hogshead setting, we didn't know. Oh, now we've got a negative number. We'll look up the PDF. I don't, I won't, I won't tolerate, tolerate your negativity over here. So that's the end of day three. We spent most of it tuning, which is kind of boring, so we didn't shoot a lot of video. It's mostly run out there, change something, come back, run it for 30 seconds. Run out again, change something, come back, run it for another 30 seconds. Gets kind of old fast. But uh, we're done with that for now. We got it about as good as we think we're going to get it at the moment. We have some more improvements we're going to want to make. Um, next time I'm out here, I'm going to finish up the little uh, meter circuit. So we'll know where the variac is positioned while we're running it. Uh, we're also going to add a paralleling choke on the uh, triple stack variac. We're only using one of them right now, and that's kind of limiting our current capacity. So putting a paralleling choke on that will allow us to use all three layers of the variac at the same time. So we're hoping that'll give us another improvement as well. Um, as it stands, I'll show you what we got running.
much better than what we had before. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.